So anyways, when I walked in there, they just, everyone just stopped what they were doing and looked up at me and was like, guess what they said? They said, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> they did, <laughs> nope. Camera's on. Oh, hey everyone! Welcome back to I'd Lather Be Shaving. I am Douglas Smythe from phoenixshaving.com and with me as always to my left... Matt Pesarsic, Razor Emporium. Coming at you live, but not really live, from sunny Phoenix, Arizona, shave mecca of the world. Yep. Today, as you can see, hide the bottle, we are talking about brushes, or will be. All this and more on today's episode of I'd Lather Be Cough, a shaving. <clears throat> So when you're getting started with shaving, you always hear about the legendary badger brush, but hold on, before you get there, start from the bottom up. I want to talk about Boar's brush because I personally think it's one of the most underrated underdogs of the shaving world. Are you kidding me? It's one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, any Italian barber shop will have an Omega shaving brush in it, and it's going to have this awesome, kind of stiff, full-bodied uh, Boar's hair brush. So it comes from obviously a pig, it's bleached, it's processed, but you end up with something that has a ton of body. So as you're making a, a lather, especially like a hard soap. Backbone, it's all about yeah, backbone. Yeah, it's tons. I and actually consider it like in between horse and, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that, go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, other farm animals that Doug was yeah. trying to describe. The really cool thing about uh, Boar's Brush is that not only after you use it, it starts getting a little softer, starts breaking in, but the tips themselves start splitting into like, these little hooks. And those are also really, really great if you have ingrown hairs, like especially in the bottom of your neck. Man, those little tiny hooks will actually dig out ingrown hairs. So if you suffer from that, try a Boar's Brush. I've never heard that before. Yeah, they're really great. I do, uh, you know, I actually prefer Boar. I mean, nowadays I'm a synthetic guy, but I preferred Boar back in the day because it was, it had more backbone than badger, I noticed. And it was great for um, if you ever wanted to mug shave or mug lather right. or bowl lather. It just had enough backbone, but still had enough softness for face lathering as well. So, I mean, it, you could get a lot of mileage out of it. Absolutely. And so I don't think it does get enough you know, uh, credit for what it is. Yeah, and the so in terms of grade, there is not different grades of boars here. It's all the same. Sometimes they do coloring where they're going to make it look like badger, but it's all the exact same thing. So it's one grade. Speaking of grades a brush material that sometimes doesn't always get considered to make the grade is horse. Now this was very popular decades ago, 1920s, 1930s, but because of an anthrax outbreak in a scare, not the music. Oh, sorry. The disease that suffers uh, with large mammals and such. No, I mean, come on, Scotty in, Scotty in. Nah, he has no idea what I'm talking about. Go on. No. But horse is kind of a step above badger, or sorry, uh, boar in terms of price. And it actually is starting to get more towards the badger in terms of its softness and performance. So it's kind of still has a bristly feel, but it is softer. I absolutely love horse. Uh, in fact, if this is badger, yep. this is horse, yep. and this is boar. Yep. Okay. Paul, John, George. Okay. Like in Beatles songs, sometimes you confuse George for either Paul or John. Yeah. And I you, you gotta that. stop and think and go. Oh no, it's actually horse. Horse is like in between both of them, I it think, is. when it comes to the, the great the quality of the, the fiber. Right. And in fact, it, it used to be used to cut with badger. So if you see like old Gillette brushes, if you read about them, they actually were horse and badger mixed. Mixed blends. Now there were some other mixed blends too that were not, you know, they don't actually advertise what they're using. Boar the same way, they've, they've mixed that in with badger, almost like a best of both worlds. I was thinking scrubbing. goat. Yeah, well that brings us to, well, one last thing before we go to badger, because that's his transition. Horse is the only animal hair that's not going to come from, you know, getting the meat or consuming the animal. So if you're someone who cares about, you know, vegan stuff, animal rights. Cruelty free. Cruelty free, horse is your choice. That's not necessarily true because they do eat horses in Europe. But it's not for... She just wrecked Europe for me, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Naysayer. Naysayer. Yeah, sure. Bylong is made in Spain and they eat horse there. 
But but they're known. Vlong is known for uh, cruelty free. Cruelty free. That's their thing. So, in terms <laughs> of the different grades and making the grades. Oh, by the way, f you. Go on. <laughs> as as uh, Douglas said here. The world of badger. Now, this is where a lot of guys, again, they hear about, man, I gotta get a badger shaving brush. This is the epitome of luxury. Badger, we don't need no stinking badger. I don't have to show you any stinking brushes. There's a lot to know. Basically, it comes down to this. Different manufacturers over the different years have invented grades of hair, but really, there's only probably three areas on a badger that hair comes from. Belly, which is represented by black badger hair like this or this. So it's gonna be kind of scruffy, this somewhat is... soft. Yep. Then you're gonna have more of the body or like finest or best, whatever. That's gonna be stuff that's more of the browns and this is gonna be body hair. And then you're gonna have- Butt hair. Sure. Oh, am I wrong? <laughs> Never mind. go on. Then you're gonna have stuff that came from around the neck area, throat area. That's all gonna be like the silver tip, high mountain white, all those different kind of high end grades. They're gonna combine kind of the more the scratchy, scruffy kind of feel, but really soft tips. Ah, like gel tips. Kind of like gel tips. Gel tips are actually, well, they're bleached. They're over bleached and then treated. And now all animal fur these days is treated. I think it has to be by law. Oh, yeah. But, um, but gel tips especially, it's not a natural feature on, on a, a badger. It's actually over bleached, giving you that gel effect. Right. And you can actually see it on some of the cheaper models. You can see as it's happening from the black hairs on to the tips, you'll see an orange like layer. Kind of like David Bowie? Kind of like David Bowie's hair in the 1970s, but uh, almost like a peroxide orange until it gets to the tips. So that's a dead giveaway right there that it was bleached and treated. What else we got? Oh, we have rubber set. Rubber set. I mean, if you want to talk about badger brushes and, and brushes in general, this is like the origin. This is like the classic, and this is the, the Rubber Set 400. It's very mysterious, this model. It came in, from what we know, three different size lofts, and this is usually indicated by the ferrule. This is the ferrule right here. I thought um, ferrule was something very different. It is, not Will Ferrell. Um, but it's, this one's blank. It came in blank, and it came numbered. Three or four. Three was for medium loft, and four was for large loft. Um, but we don't really know much. We ever get our information from is pretty much the existence of catalogs from back in the day. If you have one, share it. We, yeah, we would love to know if you have any more information on the rubber set. Uh, the latest, or the earliest I see them existing or coming around uh, is 19, late 1930s until about 1956, I think they were produced, and that's when the company was sold to Sharon Williams. But this was originally created, the Rubber Set Company was originally created by Andrew Albright. Yep. Senior. And he actually had nothing to do with the brush. He was dead long before the brushes came into existence, and long before the name Rubber Set did. His goal was to create trimmings for horses that were rubber coated. He yeah. patented the idea, made a lot of money off it, died in about 1905, and his son took over. When his son took over, put on a raffle or a contest in the shop or the factory for a name for the new company, because he saw Gillette was making headway with the safety razors and whatnot, and thought he could get in on this game by creating brushes. The rubber set, in fact. And that was the name that won it, and that's the name that was used. So it was the same process to take hair that would be used for horse reins and kind of suspend it in rubber, and now they're gonna be taking Badger hair, or boar's hair, and also suspending it in rubber. Pretty much. They created the first toothbrush, in fact, too. Really? Yeah. The like the toothbrush like we used the today? The toothbrush, yeah. With badger or boar hair, I think it would be. Imagine what that would smell like. It was a game changer, and it stuck. But it was a good idea. Um, but yeah, so that was the rubber set. Again, this one didn't appear until the 1930s. After around 1905, 1906, that's when the brushes came on the scene. They were wooden handles. They had all different types. They had travel brushes that were really cool too. Like a little lever, you could scroll it up and lock it to the side and the brush would pop up. Um, but this particular brush has really caught my eye and it caught, catches a lot of people's eyes because of the mystery, I think, surrounding it and because it's so cool. As again, you can see this, the top screws off. And this wasn't for like switching knots at the time, though nowadays we, we think of them as such. This is actually for home use, not barber use. A barber might want to switch out knots in between customers, and there were special uh, handles they did create for that. Mm. This one, however, was not. It was actually glued on. Uh, so that little red ring wouldn't actually be there. I don't think they used the O-rings. Again, it's tough to tell, but you can see there's not really much thread on here to grab onto, yeah. so it wasn't meant for t turn, taking on, taking off and putting on. Um, but yeah, a great brush, great way to it. This one's hollow, and it's been recreated by a few other companies nowadays. I actually took a stab at it myself. Uh, this is my aluminum one, and this is my red one, and this is one I made with, uh, it was actually molded. And this one I did sell different knots for that you could switch on and off, and in fact, I encouraged that. But it originally wasn't meant for that. Speaking of not meant for that, 
EverReady also took a stab at making brushes. So a lot of guys see these old ones, EverReadys. They're great candidates for restoration. Oh my God, though. Yeah. If you're gonna restore one, you gotta drill out the knot. Wear yeah. gloves and possibly wear a breath later or like some type of mask because right. it stinks. The friction from the drill heats up the old glue. Who knows what's in that stuff? You don't want to breathe it in and you don't want to get it on your hands because you will. The drill will whip it around. Right. The best way to do that if you're going to do a restoration is to shear it off with a nice big pair of scissors. Then use a Forstner bit on a drill press. Hold it, you know, really carefully. And that Forstner bit will actually make a real nice flat kind of platform for your new knot to be installed in. But these old EverReady handles are also super collectible, super popular. Um, sometimes they've held up well. This one, not so much. <laughs> it has the original box and looks really beautiful, but you know the plastic. It's cracked. Yeah, it has cracked over time. Um, yeah. You know, and that said, though, I mean, you will read in the forums about if you're new. Uh, about restoring, and sometimes you'll read about the, the steam process of removing a knot. Right. Because it is possible to remove a knot. However, if you're using like a plastic handle, ever ready like that, you don't want to steam that. The heat will screw with the handle. It'll warp it, and so on and so forth. If you're gonna do that, use it, do that with a uh, metal right. handle, something that's gonna keep its shape. And the other kind of little, dirty little secret about Badger here, I just want to kind of finish on, is that if you look at different knots, even this one, this is an old vintage one, it says pure badger, yet when I look and kind of fan through it, I, I, can, talking about this. I can see different kind of thick black hairs pop up. And sometimes these were cut, like I said earlier, with different kinds of hair. So this could be a goat, this could be camel, and that's something you see on brushes. You know, ever ready, this may look like it was a really, really fancy thing, but it probably wasn't their highest end brush of the day. But even today, you want to look at brushes and always fan through them and see if you, the hairs look consistent or if you see ones that kind of really look different, wavy, jaggedy, a lot thicker, black. Those are probably going to be camel or goat or some other kind of hair. And those come from cheaper companies over, or companies that couldn't afford the pure product over in Asia. Because in, in China, they actually have auctions for the best badger yeah. for our hair. And uh, the, the person with the most money gets the best product. So yeah. that's how that goes. Now let's talk about synthetics really quick, Matt. What are we looking at here? Synthetics, you know, they when they made their debut back in the day in the 50s, 60s, they were a plastic product. They weren't, you know, really developed. So people kind of looked at them poorly, but they've made tons of headway in the last couple, you know, years, especially with the resurgence of wet shaving. And now the makeup brush industries like out of South Korea. Have really South Korea has the best synthetics. Yeah. That's where all the synthetics come from. Though it, this not made, was made in Asia, in China, the fibers came from South Korea, where right. they have the technology for this right now. I mean, if you look at each individual hair or whatever fiber, it is really a pretty cool shape. It's outstanding. They do well, the best synth hair and the best microfibers as well. You're gonna see the difference here. This one from fiber the optics. 50s looks like fiber optics. Yeah. They're just really square, little columns. It's like fishing, a fishing line. I mean, yeah, they're just cut off. And you look at this, and they actually have a taper to them yeah. now. So they are a lot more natural looking. and Come they, a long way. They feel great. And I'm a huge fan. Yeah. That's brushes. In a nutshell, kind of. Or a badger loft. Let's paint pictures. Yeah, I think we're gonna do a paint challenge. Doug paints portrait of Matt. Matt paints portrait of Doug. That was a very helpful Thanks. slide. Thanks. The dad, the dad. Thanks, Diane. <laughs> Two minutes on the clock. We'll let the commenters pick who wins. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I had to clear the work area. Really? Is how I have to paint Matt? Doug? Like what he's wearing now or like how I think of him in my head? Because I think of Doug very differently. Well, painting is an interpretation, so feel free to uh, express someone, yourself. Uh, you're yellow. Start in three, two, one. I heard a joke the other day. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> that joke sucked. And you're driving in a Chevy and you feel something heavy. Diarrhea. <laughs> really? You heard that the other day? Were you hanging out with a third grader? <laughs> yeah. When you're walking down the hall and you feel something fall? Finish it. Diarrhea. <laughs> Some people think it's gross, but it's really great on toast. <laughs> That's what I guess I'm thinking of diarrhea because I'm looking at this <laughs> ass water. Well, I don't believe like that's so taking up space in my brain. Brown though, like. and so gross. <clears throat> what color eyes do you have? They're the color of the sea after the after a storm. Yep, uh, <laughs> brown. <laughs>
<laughs> Some people think it's funny, but it's really wet and runny. Diarrhea. <laughs> 50 seconds left. Wow. I hope you edit this. <laughs> There's no, there's no black paint here. You got to make it. I did. <laughs> How did you make black paint? I mixed blue and brown. Oh. Mister, I took super art class, but yet don't know my primary colors. <laughs> <laughs> you should put that on a business card. You <laughs> <laughs> so violent. <laughs> With my words. I've become verbally abusive as we've... <laughs> Been filming all day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. <laughs> Happy Friday, folks. Just want to get that out there. All right. Put your paintbrushes down and. Hold on. Hold on. Almost there. <laughs> That's what I look like. You're wearing your dumb little hat. <laughs> all right. Paintbrushes down. Matt, would you uh, would you like to walk us through yours? Well, I I've got Doug here. Hold on, Wait, I gotta put it back on his clipboard. I got Doug here in his dumb little hat. He's always wearing his <laughs> captain's hat. He's gonna use white. Well, white paint. You made my eyes white. Yeah, I have blue eyes. Yeah, blue. What's the white? Pupils. Pupils aren't white. <laughs> well, to me, they were. <laughs> I didn't want to make them black. I don't know. You're like an old sailor. <laughs> Salty. And so there's his big uh, handlebar mustache and his little chin strap beard that thinks it looks cool, but it's really not. It, it frames my face. It looks like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> and where's the whole lifetime supply of cigarettes and booze, huh? Calm Where the down. is that? You forget about that? Think that'll just be water under the fridge? Ricky, the money's the gone. This contract is Nalton. Nalton, boy! <laughs> So, um, and you know, you kind of look like a Lego man. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. In so, that I do, yes. Yeah. So, In reality, to me, you're a Lego, right, like you're a Lego sailor skipper man, like. Wow, that's the rum talking. <laughs> that's, yep. <laughs> okay, Doug, uh, show us your painting. Yep. It looks that's a portrait of Matt. Is it not? And then I have a mat down below with pink dots on it. <laughs> and the sun. It also looks like a really gross hot dog. <laughs> As a vegan, all hot dogs are gross. Guacala in Espanol. In a, on a sunny day, there's a hot hot dog on a sidewalk. And, <laughs> and notice Matt on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Because on a hot day, I would be all over a hot dog. And those are probably pepperonis or some other kind of thing, like tomato slices. You know, pink, like pepperoni. Yeah. Anyways. So, you decide who won this round, folks, down below in the comment section. And as you are commenting, remember, if you comment, you could possibly win your very own aftershave and soap, simply by commenting. So subscribe, like, and... And comment. That's right. And next time you have a shaving brush, make sure to paint Douglas's face. Oh my. <laughs> we'll see you next time.